So let's talk a little bit about disruption. You know, there are many different definitions of disruption, and everyone in this room is going through their version of disruption. But here's how I define it. Disruption is a radical change that shatters the status quo. It's not just a small change. It's not just an incremental or marginal change. It's a radical change. It's when the marketplace is turned on its head. Earlier on, we heard about the example of Netflix, who went from mailing out DVDs to now being the powerhouse that they have become. We can all think about great examples, dramatic examples of disruption that have changed everything. You know, in my world, uh, a lot of what I'm doing is now digital. A lot of what I'm doing is called MNT business. You know what that is? Mike, not their business. I love that kind of business because I can do what I'm doing without having to physically be there. In fact, even this afternoon, I'm delighted to be physically in front of you, but part of the mission of this afternoon is to create products that can reach anyone, anywhere. And I'll tell you a wonderful story of how Seminars On Demand uh, created a fantastic opportunity for me. Uh, I got a call about two years ago from an individual who manages a professional service firm in Amman, Jordan, called KPMG. How many of you have heard of KPMG? It's a big professional accounting practice. And uh, he calls me and he says, uh, would you be willing to come to Amman, Jordan to talk to 200 leaders from throughout the Middle East? And I'm thinking, wow, talk about the opportunity to make a real difference in a region that I read about but that I had never visited. So of course I said yes. And of course, I went there. And when I met him, I asked him, his name is Hashem. I said, Hashem, why didn't you call me? Out of all the motivational speakers on the planet, and trust me, there are quite a few, why did you call me? He said, because I was walking through the airport in Dubai, and I was walking through the duty-free store, and I looked at the video monitor, and there you were. And I thought, I want to bring that individual to my people. And that was a seminars on demand video that he saw, right? So what's the moral of the story? The moral of the story is that if you embrace disruption, if you bring your best game and you become the best because of your commitment to learning and development, then miracles can happen. So when I talk to you about miracles, I'm not talking about divine intervention. I am talking about something fantastic that you can make happen. And I think being here this afternoon can help you make your personal miracle happen. So what else is disruption? Well, it's a crisis. It rewards the fast and punishes the slow. The big do not eat the small. Oftentimes, small carries incredible advantages. How many of you in this room are in small business? Can I see by show of hands? Exactly. You have got an edge over the giants who are not as nimble or agile as you are. But if you slow and you late to the party, by the time you get to the party, all the gifts are gone. <laughs> now, when you hear the word crisis, you may think problem. I'm here to share with you that the dictionary defines the word crisis as a defining moment or a turning point. So I love crises. By the way, as a motivational speaker, people don't call me when everything is copacetic. People don't call me when everything is hunky-dory. They call me when they need a motivational speaker. That's why when I read about big disruptions happening in the world, when people become anxious and become in need of motivation, I go, yes, I'll pay my mortgage at the end of the month. Uh, now, this is a very important point I'm about to make. Disruption could also be a person that precipitates a fundamental shift in thinking, action, and behavior. So I want you to see yourself as a disruptor. You do not need to be Steve Jobs or Elon Musk or Jeff Bezos to be a disruptor. Every one of us, in some shape, manner, or form, can shift the way the people around us do business. We can redefine the way we do business. I'll tell you, as a South African who's been in Toronto, Canada now for 20 years, I came into this market and I first questioned my ability to thrive in this market because it's so competitive. 
But because of the way I do business, because of the data that I bring to people, because of my accent, if I didn't have an accent, I wouldn't make a living, just joking. But seriously, what's the difference, by the way, between a good speaker and a great speaker? A South African accent. Right? But I'm saying I'm using my tools, I'm using my gifts, I'm using whatever I've got to differentiate myself and disrupt my marketplace. Don't assume that because you believe you can only make a small step, you shouldn't take that step. I don't know about you, but in my world, things are so competitive that just that small step can mean all the difference in the world. So as I walk you through the seven secrets to dancing with disruption, just think about what are the small steps that you can take in your world to make all the difference in the world. Okay, so you're all here because you understand how important learning something new is. As Jeff Bezos from Amazon said, it's always day one. That gets to a quick exercise. Just turn to a person on either side of you, look them in the eyes and say, it's always day one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So let me give you this insight. If you take nothing else away, take this thought away. Have a passion for the grind. You know what grind means? Get ready, it's a new day. Because every day, by definition, is a new day. So when I woke up this morning, here, in the fabulous state of Michigan, which luckily is only a 40 minute flight from Toronto, I thought, wow, it's a new day. I'm at the Four Point Sheraton. And I get to influence and motivate a group of really committed disruptors who are paying me the ultimate compliment of coming to hear me this afternoon. That's why I'm so happy. Can you tell? But anyway, here's the six stages of new that our organization has identified as a process that we will all go through, sometimes on a daily basis. So here's the first stage of being new. You're literally a beginner. You're literally a rookie. How many of you have noticed that the most motivated person in any organization is the person who's just started? Do you know why? Because they do not know it cannot be done. They have a very poorly developed sense of the odds against them. So they go and make it happen. They're not carrying baggage. They're not carrying any legacy. They're fresh and they have something to prove. And most importantly, they've bought into the dream. Now, if you are a beginner, then you are lucky enough to be confronted by a series of breakthroughs because there is such a thing as beginner's luck. How many of you have noticed when you're enthusiastic and excited and motivated, great things happen because people respond to your energy? However, the bottom line is that at some point in time, you're going to hit the wall. What is the wall? The wall is either adversity or it's a difficult person or it's too much work or it's taking the wrong turn, or hitting a dead end, and it's one of those moments where you ask yourself why you even got into this business in the first place. <laughs> How many of you have ever had one of those days when it took all you had just to keep up with the losers? Yeah. <laughs> it's like someone asking your name that day, you go, um, it'll come to me. <laughs> but as someone once said, a wall is simply there to keep uncommitted people out. So the people in this room have hit the wall, but you've broken through the wall. You've gone around the wall, under the wall. You have found a way, or you have made a way. And the function of an afternoon like this is for you to reflect on what you've been through and to get ready for what's coming. By the way, for those of you who are interested, uh, I create a new video every three weeks. I put it on my site, mikelifting.com. This is a public service announcement. It's absolutely free. This is my contribution to humanity. <laughs> but I've just put out a video called The Three Rules of Summer. First rule, relax. Nothing worthwhile ever came out of a mind that wasn't relaxed. Second rule, reflect. It's half time. Reflect over the first six months. What did you learn? How did you grow? And then the third rule, Get ready. It's going to be a heck of a fall. Right? Now, once you've consolidated, once you have reviewed, reset, and re-engaged, now you get into the best stage of all. That's where you are the champion. 
That's where you're firing on all cylinders. That's where you feel on any given day the force is with you. How many of you have ever had one of those days? Like you're in a meeting. Now, this is a beautiful moment. You're in a meeting and you say something. And as the words come out of your mouth, you amaze yourself. <laughs> How many of you have ever had one of those moments where you say something so incredible that you go, whoa. That's when the force is with you. That's when you're playing at that champion level. And that's where you want to get to and that's where you want to stay. Because the final stage, the sixth stage, is a dangerous stage. That's where you plateau. That's when you feel like you're just going through the motions. That's when people start to say different days, same stuff. And you show up for work and your body language is, I'm tired, I'm bored, why am I even here? How many of you have ever had to attend a meeting with someone going through the plateau phase? How many of you have noticed that whole meeting goes down? So you always want to be someone who goes back to the beginner. So I will share with you, I am talking to you like this is the very first talk I'm giving because it is. It's the very first talk of all the talks that are going to happen next. For many of you, it's the very first time that I am talking to you. And I want to give you this talk so that this talk becomes the anchor for even better talks into the future. So you want to be a beginner, you want to cycle through the champion, you want to go back to being a beginner, but you've got to be willing to go through all the stages in between. And I'll tell you, one of the key secrets that we're going to be exploring throughout this afternoon is your passion for the game, no matter how long you've been in the game. And I want you to think about the very successful people in your life. Think about how fascinated, how um, immersed they are in their respective businesses because they love what they do. And let me give you this key insight. The time to love what you do is when you do not love what you do. It's called remind yourself of how great this business is. That's my favorite word, by the way. Remind. Put things back into your mind. Because when you are guided by the right thoughts, you tend to feel the right feelings and then you tend to take the right actions. And then, by the way, it becomes a habit. And the more it becomes a habit, the more ingrained it becomes in your character. And then it becomes easier and easier as long as you keep reminding yourself of what's important. And by the way, that's why you're here this afternoon. I may not share anything with you that you didn't already know, but maybe you didn't know that you knew. And maybe this afternoon is just taking something from back of mind and making it front of mind, so that's the thought that guides you. Because I know I'm at my best when I'm intentionally being my best. On the other hand, how many of you have ever been in a situation where you found yourself becoming someone who you didn't want to be? Yeah. Like when you're late and someone's in your way. Or when you want to achieve A and someone wants to achieve B and you cannot believe how stupid they are. Yeah. How many of you have ever found yourself arguing with an idiot? Right. Well, here's my caution. If you ever find yourself arguing with an idiot, make sure they don't think they're doing the same thing. <laughs> All right. So look, 